In this lesson, we're going to be doing something that is very common in web development, and that is processing a form. Pretty much every application is going to need a form, whether it be a registration form, a sign up form, I, I guess those are the exact same thing, a login form, a profile page edit form, all that good stuff. And Vue makes all of that really easy to work with. So here in our starter file, I have a lot of Bulma markup, a lot of HTML, and let's go through it real quick. We have the opening body tag, and these three, hero, hero body, and container, basically that's what gets us this uh, blue background, really nice blue background, and everything is centered in the middle and in the vertical viewport. Now we have the title, which is a very simple title right here, and box is what gets us our white background, and then finally, this is where we'll be doing all of our work inside of the signup form. I have an ID of signup form and each name field and email field has a field, a label, and an input. Now notice there's no view anywhere in our template just yet. Even if we scroll down, there is no view right here. Down here, I have a function, a helper function for is valid email. And that's what we're going to use to validate if this email is actually an email. It has to have that at symbol. It has to have that dot com or dot co or something like that. And this is just something I pulled off online. Uh, not really reliable. Just a quick and dirty check to see if it is an actual email. All right, we're going to do this in JavaScript first. Scroll up. We have the name input, the email input, the submit button. We're going to grab three things here. We're going to grab the form itself because we want to listen for the submit event. We're going to grab this name input because we want to get the value out of that name. And we want to get this email input because we want to get the value out of that email. So let's do it in JavaScript. Grab the things we need. And we're going to say const signup form is equal to document dot. We already have an ID on it, so we can use get element by ID. Sign up form, const name input. And here we can say sign up form dot query selector. We can search within an elements children. And here we'll say input or name is equal to name. And this is a good practice to do it as we search within a child. If you're doing this in plain JavaScript, because maybe you have multiple forms on the page, maybe there's a login form and a sign up form. And both of those are going to have a name input. And that's why we're searching within the children of signup form. And we'll do the same for email input. That is name is equal to email. All right, we have the three things that we need now. We can listen, listen for the submit event. Signup form, dot add event listener, submit. And we're going to say process signup form. Now we'll create this function, process signup form. I like doing this as a separate function instead of just lumping it in here and saying function right there because it makes it a little bit more readable. On submit, we're going to process signup form. So we'll copy this, paste that down there. We have the E, which is the event out of there, e.prevent default because we don't want the signup form to refresh the page, which is the default behavior of an HTML form. Const name is equal to name input dot value. Const email is equal to email input dot value. Console dot log. And we can do name and email. But a cool trick is if you wrap this in an object, you're going to get an object with a key value. And this is where we have enhanced object literals with ES6. And I'll show you what that looks like. Alert processing. And that should be good enough to process our form. So we'll go over here, right click, inspect, my name, my email at scotch.io. Open up the console, click submit, and we have name, my name, email, my email at scotch.io, and we have our alert. And that's what I was talking about with the enhanced object literal. It'll say name colon, my name, email colon, and that's just an easy way to get a little bit more readable console logs. So we'll click OK there. And that's how we do it in JavaScript. We're not going to deal with the validation in JavaScript, but this is a lot of code for 
processing this form. And you can see how it can get to be a lot if you have multiple inputs, multiple validation types, can be a problem to scale. And yes, I know we can probably serialize this whole form so that makes it a little bit simpler, but just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna grab each one individually. Let's go to the view side of things since that's what we are most interested in. We're gonna say const app is equal to new view. And if you're wondering why I keep doing const, it's just a habit of doing the ES6 syntax. This is valid in all the latest browsers. If you want to be backwards compatible with a lot of other browsers, you can say var element. And instead of doing an ID of app, we already have an ID of sign up form right here. And we'll use that. Data, we're going to have two variables for name. We'll just leave it blank for now. And email. We'll go up here and we'll bind name and email to their corrective spots. Let's break this out just to be a little bit more readable. V model, and that's the way we bind data to an input, and we'll say name. All right, so if we save that, we have blanks. And if we go down here and fill in name and email, save, those are automatically input there. Next up is methods. Process form is function. And we'll just say console.log. Name is this.name. And email is this.email. And we can't use that cool enhanced object literal trick because we have this dot instead of just name and email. Alert. And we're going to say processing. Save, name, email at scotch.io, submit. Uh-oh, and our HTML form refresh the page because that's the default behavior. We'll have to come up here and we didn't even listen for the submit event. That's my fault. So we'll say submit dot prevent to prevent the default behavior is equal to process form, I believe we called it. Process form, that's right. So process form. Let's try this now. Chris, Chris at scotch. If I could spell correctly, scotch.io, submit. We have our console log and our processing. Very good. Now let's do two more things. One, I want to add the validation for this. So here I'm going to say we're going to create an errors object. And we'll say name is false because there's no errors on name yet. And email is false. And notice everything starts on the data side of things. We're going to have data here. And then if we want to affect our template, we just change the data to true. And then if this is set to true, we should show an error right here that says, please check for a valid email. So everything in view is going to start at the data level. And then you manipulate your HTML using those data variables. You never really want to bring in jQuery or, or plain JavaScript and manipulate the HTML directly. So we'll set this to true and let's go up here and show an error message if that is true. So we'll say p class help is danger and this is some of the Bulma classes again. Please enter a valid email. And we only want to show this, remember our v if directive er from earlier. We only want to show this if errors.email exists. And currently it does. If we go down here, set it to false, nothing happens. Very nice. Now the next step is to listen for this event on a typing event, and then we'll show and hide that if somebody has already been typing into it. The way we do that, we could use the key up event here at key up is equal to validate email, and this is a method we'll create in a second. But here, I want to use the blur event, and that's going to fire if a person types into the input box and then leaves it. Because we don't really want them to see the error while they're typing, because maybe they're not done typing yet. Very good. Blur, validate email. We'll go down here. Under methods, we'll create a validate email function. And we're going to say this.errors.email is equal to and we'll use this method right here that we have. And this is a function that's bound directly to the window object. 
So we can say window dot is valid email. And you can actually omit the window part because JavaScript will automatically look at the global window object. So we can say that. But I think it's good to say a little bit more precise about where our things are. And we'll pass in this dot email. And I spelled function wrong. Let's also, well, let's say const is valid is equal to this right here. And this is, I'm doing this because I want to console.log the is valid. And then we'll say is valid right here. So typing, 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 nothing happens. If I click out, the blur event will happen and we get false because this is not a valid email. So we'll say at scotch.io, click out. And that's true because that is valid. And let's see, this is wrong because this should be not is valid. So this.errors.email is only going to be set to true if this email is not valid. I hope that wasn't too confusing. You could also name this something like validations or something like that, but I think errors is a good way to do it. And if it's not valid, then the errors email is equal to true because it is an error. So that should be good enough to validate email. Chris at scotch, come up, needs to be valid, dot IO is valid. Chris, Sevaleha, and we'll hit the submit button. Very nice. Now validation in view, this is not the way I would probably suggest doing it. There are plugins in view that help you do more validations and do it a lot more robustly. But this is just a really quick example for showing how you would do it and how easy Vue makes it compared to doing it the plain JavaScript way. This isn't the most readable, again, and I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record about it, but I think Vue makes all of our code far more readable, especially when you know that the source of truth is your data, and then your HTML is affected by the data, all your methods are found in one central location, and that's the power of Vue.